And what Beth Jesus says is that they are funding their operations not through classical API fees, so they're not taking any money from users, but they're made um, short bets on the Nvidia stock, and that's how they're funding it. Very interesting article from Market Watch that says this man wiped $600 billion of Nvidia's valuation, the biggest daily loss in the history of the US market, according to Dow Jones uh, Market data one man was mostly to blame his name is liang wengfeng and he is the co-founder of the china-based quantitative hedge fund high flyer quant now at this point you should you should perk your ears up a little bit because you can see um that liang wengfeng he's not only the founder of uh deep seek ai he's also the founder of the China-based quantitative hedge fund High Flyer Quant. Now, what is a quantitative hedge fund? A quantitative hedge fund is a hedge fund that uses mathematical quantitative uh, models of analysis uh, to do investment decisions and so on. Liang's hedge fund reportedly manages $8 billion, but he's hardly the first quantitative trader to build on skills. He refined in the quantitative trading arena and use them to build technologies with broader applications. So we can see here that a lot of quantitative traders that use mathematical models and algorithms for trading, they all they have a, a open door uh, relationship with the Wall Street. You can see that uh, Jeff Bezos, for example, which is also mentioned in the article, again, all the articles linked below if you wanna dive into them, we can see that Jeff Bezos, for example, is one um, example that they list here of someone that started in Wall Street, then went to went into tech. The reverse is also often possible. A lot of people start in tech and then go to Wall Street. For years, Wall Street had an edge in competing for top tech talent, said Evan Fegans, a co-portfolio manager for the TCW Artificial Intelligence ETF during an interview with Market Watch. For a long time, the quant hedge funds were aggressively hiring out of tech. Fegan said, there's not a lot of people with this kind of expertise in data science and machine learning and going to a quant hedge fund was one of the most lucrative things you could do. So you can see a lot of AI and ML people um, went down that route. There's also another interesting story related to the case uh, by Gregory Suckerman. Uh, Gregory Suckerman, like, Apparently, he didn't seem to know that for the Chinese version of the book Suckerman wrote on Jim Simons, this Jim Simons, again, he's the quantitative finance legend, Liam Wengfeng, the CEO of DeepSeek and co-founder of uh, High Fly Capital, wrote a foreword for Suckerman's book, the Chinese version. In 2019, Suckerman writes from the eye perspective, I wrote a book about Jim Simons, the pioneer in quant who started Renaissance Technologies, the hedge fund with the ridiculous average annual returns, 66% or so. Early Monday morning, a friend emailed, I was reading about that new China-made AI model that's crushing US tech stocks today. The head of the Chinese company that developed it, Liang Wengfeng, also runs a Chinese quant hedge fund. Interestingly, he wrote the preface to the Chinese edition of your Simons book. And then this is what Liang added in the foreword of the Jim Simons book. The publication of this book unravels many previously unresolved mysteries and brings us a wealth of experiences to learn from. And then Suckerman adds jokingly, even my mother didn't get that much out of the book. Liang Wengfeng had a huge appreciation of Simons and that should tell us something very important. We can see that um, Liang Wengfeng works at the intersection of quantitative trading and AI and machine learning. Let's go to the Financial Times article. In 2021, Liang started buying thousands of NVIDIA graphics processing units for his AI side project while running his quant trading fund Highflyer. Industry insiders viewed it as the eccentric action of a billionaire looking for a new hobby. Liang's status as an outsider in the AI field was an unexpected source of strength. At Highflyer, he built a fortune by using AI and algorithms 
to identify patterns that could affect stock prices. His team became adept at using Nvidia chips to make money trading stocks. In 2023, he launched DeepSeek, announcing his intention to develop human-level AI. Next part you really gotta focus on. After Washington banned Nvidia from exporting its most powerful chips to China, local AI companies have been forced to find innovative ways to maximize the computing power of a limited number of onshore chips. A problem Liang's team already knew how to solve. So this is a very interesting bit of information. Washington basically forced the DeepSeek team to make the most resource effective algorithms possible and in this way probably led to the huge effect of Leipzig. That's a pretty beautiful example here in the Financial Times of the law of unintended consequences. And if you look at Meta, for example, that tries to invest $60 billion or the new Stargate project, which is between Oracle, um, OpenAI and the third Japanese company, I think, uh, SoftBank. Uh, they, they they pump into it 500 billions of dollars now five to six million dollars is extremely small compared to that and this of course made investors think wait if deep seek was just that cheap to produce we're not gonna need that many chips from nvidia thus the stock went down and what Beif jesus says is that they are funding their operations, not through classical API fees, so they're not taking any money from users, but they're made um, short bets on the Nvidia stock and that's how they're funding it. So basically they released their DeepSeek AI model, the Nvidia stock went down, their bet was proven correct, they get money for their bet and that's how they fund the model. Pretty bold. Pretty bold guess here, but I think um, it could probably be right. If that's the case, everyone get into AI, get into ML, get into quantitative finance, read books about it, um, learn everything about people like Jim Simons and enjoy life.